Good evening. Welcome to the Glassoff Gang. And the Glassoff Gang is back thanks to you, our fans and supporters that helped save the Glassoff Gang. And we are eternally grateful to you. This is a fan-generated show now, so please go to jamieglassoff.com and support the Glassoff Gang and help us to keep going, help us to keep telling the truth about the left and Islamic Jihad and how those two destructive forces are working together in their war against Western civilization and against Western freedoms. Thank you very much. And we are honored and privileged to have as our guest this evening, Raymond Ibrahim, a Shulman Fellow at the David Horwitz Freedom Center. Raymond Ibrahim, what a pleasure and a privilege to have you back on the Glasgow game. Hi, Jamie. Always a pleasure to be with you again. Thank you, Raymond. And tonight, our theme, our title, The Islamic Hate of the Christian Cross. You just wrote a very powerful and profound article on that for PJ Media. And of course, as always, you're writing uh, such powerful and profound articles for Front Page Magazine. Thank you very much. It's, uh, again, an honor to have you uh, at Front Page. Raymond, let's begin. The Islamic hate of the Christian cross. What is it, and how does it manifest itself? Uh, well, thank you, Jamie. Um, the Islamic hate for the Christian cross, uh, in that article, what I try to do is what I often do, which is connect the dots and show how actions that are happening today by Muslims and so forth have a long history and are actually doctrinally rooted. They're not just some aberrations the way the media would like to portray them, as they often do. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, last month in May, a Muslim boy from Africa, an immigrant in Italy, in an Italian school, beat up an Italian, uh, young Italian uh, schoolgirl because she was wearing a crucifix around her neck. And, uh, you know, it was dismissed, it's no big deal, he's just a schoolboy, etc., etc. But the fact is, if you go back into the Islamic teachings and Islamic history and the Islamic world, current affairs, you're going to see the same exact behavior. And it starts with the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad. According to Islamic sources in the Hadith and the Sira or biography, the Prophet of Islam really had a repugnance for the, for the crucifix or the cross. And he would destroy it whenever he would see it. He would tell people to take it off their necks if they were wearing it and call it a piece of idolatry and so forth. And the reason for this is because the, the symbol of the cross represents the fundamental uh, difference that or disagreement that Christians and Muslims have. As you know, Muslim apologists are very fond of talking about how Jesus, according to them, or Isa, was born of a virgin. Uh, committed, uh, did uh, perform miracles and will come back at the end of days, but they resurrect that he was crucified. Uh, I'm sorry, they reject that he was crucified on a cross, that he was resurrected from the dead, and so forth. So that's why the cross, I think, has always had a very powerful, um, uh, uh, provocative effect on a lot of Muslims. So then you leave Muhammad and you go into the Islamic conquest and you and you read the historical sources written by Muslims and you will find them destroying crucifixes, telling Christian empires, Christian peoples who they were meeting on the battlefield, destroy your crosses, join Islam, and we will give you peace, and so forth. And now uh, the issue is, as usual, with all of Islam's hostilities, you see them in the past, you fast forward, and you see them today. So the Italian boy in Italy is the tip of the iceberg. If this is what happened in Italy, a Catholic majority nation, if you go to the Muslim world, where Christians are a minority, this sort of behavior manifests itself regularly. So in Egypt, for example, last year, a Coptic Christian woman was attacked, molested, raped, and murdered because she was identified as a Christian by her cross, the cross in her car. She had parked by a church to deliver medicine to an elderly Coptic woman. A year before that, another Coptic, a Coptic student, about 17 years old, was attacked by his teacher and fellow students and murdered. Why? Because his cross was showing and he refused to hide it. Even in Indonesia, for example, which is often touted in the West as a moderate Muslim nation, and as you know, it's the largest Muslim nation by population-wise, um, a woman a few years ago, I believe her name is Julie Aftab, and she's a Christian, just because she was wearing the crucifix and a, a Muslim identified her as a Christian, he attacked her, assaulted her, poured battery on her face, uh, acid, battery acid on her face, poured it down her throat, ruined about 70% of her esophagus. She's still alive, but very much mutilated and in pain. Um, so this sort of thing is happening all the time. And the point is, uh, people in the West or in America may be familiar with seeing the Islamic State or 
ISIS, as it's called, destroying crosses, destroying churches, telling the West that you need to destroy your, uh, your crosses, which it does, in fact, for example, when it beheaded 21 Coptic Christians, and also when it beheaded and slaughtered 30 Ethiopian Christians. And all that, of course, they're just regurgitating Islamic scripture that I alluded to. But the point is that it, this sort of attack and hostility on the cross is happening all throughout the world, not just the Islamic world, as we saw it's happening in Italy. It's happening, uh, I saw a video, uh, you may have seen it, the Islamic State uh, destroying cemeteries, Christian cemeteries, destroying the crucifix or the cross on cemeteries. And yet, this is happening all around the world. In Libya, there was another video, not of ISIS, but of just regular Muslims destroying the, Christ the Christian crosses and, and, cruci and crucifixes and tombstones in a Christian cemetery. It's happened in Germany. It's happened in France uh, very much, uh, maybe three months ago. A Muslim man went on a rampage and destroyed something like 200 Christian crosses and cemeteries. So the point is, this is an, it, it, it's a manifestation or a reflection <clears throat> of a deep, uh, <clears throat> deep-rooted animus for not just the cross, uh, the cross is representative of Christianity. So to me, it's just a deep hatred and a reflection of that deep hatred for Christianity. Raymond, let's crystallize an issue here. Uh, let's focus in on Christ's death on the cross as well as his resurrection and the Islamic perspective of that because this is crucial and, and you've hit on it. Uh, Muslims often say that they respect Jesus and that Islam respects Jesus. You know, I've always been very curious as to how you can respect someone but simultaneously lie about them. In other words, is it not true that Islam actually denies that Christ died on the cross? And, you know, this is the very central story and mission uh, of Jesus Christ on this earth. Talk, uh, uh, please, a little bit about uh, Christ's crucifixion and Islam's perspective and denial of the crucifixion. Absolutely, Jamie. That's the grand point right there. A lot of the Muslim apologists and Western apologists for Islam will give you the half-truth and say Muslims revere Jesus and so forth. It's a half-truth because, yes, they do. The problem is the Jesus they revere is not the real Jesus. It's a man or a figment of, uh, a figment of Muhammad's imagination called Isa, who, yes, he was born of a virgin. He has some parallels with the uh, Christian Jesus. He was born of a virgin, miracles and so forth but he wasn't crucified, he never died, and so forth. So according to this Jesus, the Muslim Jesus, is renowned for coming back on Judgment Day to do what? To destroy the cross, actually, and to kill the pigs in that order, according to an Islamic hadith by the Muslim prophet Muhammad. Wait one second, now who are the pigs? Well, of course the pigs are representative of the Jews, but it's, it's, a, it's a combination of killing, in a figurative sense, the Jews, but also killing the animals because, of course, pigs are so taboo in Islamic culture. So in that sense, everything is being attacked. But the point here, as you're alluding to, is this is this is not the Jesus, just like Muslims, in a way, revere Mary. But if you read about this Mary, that's not the real Mary. So there's a lot of deception going on because it's actually worse than if, if a religion rejected Jesus or didn't believe in Jesus or Mary because at least they say okay Christians have their narrative we reject it what Muslims have done is they've taken it extrapolated it deformed it and then said this is the real thing and then what the West is doing is they're appeasing them by saying yes let's all go along because after all we have commonalities which we don't Raymond let's also center in more on Islam's hate of the cross in terms of the Prophet Muhammad and his disposition to the cross. Uh, in your scholarship, you have uh, revealed and, and documented Muhammad's hatred of the crucifix. Talk to us about that. Absolutely, Jamie, and that's the whole point. If you look at Islamic scriptures, they appropriate some, uh, some Christian and also Jewish uh, scriptures and narratives and so forth, but then they mutilate them and change them for their own purposes. So. Muhammad hated the idea that Christ or Jesus was crucified and resurrected. And of course, to Christians, this is the fundamental narrative of it all. And um, But the point is that you have these apologists who are distorting it all and just taking the positive elements, if you want to call them that, by saying, look, this is, we believe in Jesus. Isn't that better than other religions? We revere him. He's a prophet and so forth. But the point is, this, that's actually more problematic. That doesn't really help. And in fact, historically, that's been the source of so much of the constant conflict between Christendom and Christian minorities, of course, under Islam and the Muslim world. 
So it's not it's not about the, the, the peripherals that people want to you know highlight. It's about the fundamental issue, which is the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. Raymond, let's center in on the denial in the West, the silence in the West to these atrocities and to Islam's hatred of the cross, because we know that silence is complicity, that denial is complicity. And even to extend, uh, uh, you know, to, to build on that in your, in your answer, please, not only is there a denial and silence, but as you've written and, and that you're documenting, there's also an accommodation. Western institutions are actually accommodating the removal of crucifixes. Um, so inform us uh, on this denial and where it's headed. Thank you. Sure, Jamie, that's a great point. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, that when I first got into this field many, many years ago, I actually thought that what was that the problem in the West is there's not enough knowledge. Uh, it's not being highlighted and so forth, uh, you know, what we're talking about. And you're right, it's not being highlighted by mainstream media and so forth. But what I've come to learn is that, especially with the rise of the Islamic State, is that, you know, it's not about ignorance anymore. You have to keep in mind that everything that the Islamic State has done, all those atrocities, the beheadings, the rapes, the enslavements, the immolation or, or burning of human beings alive and so forth, this wasn't brought to us by CNN or Reuters or Fox News. This was brought to us by the Islamic State. They wanted to take themselves and they wanted you and everyone to see it. And they posted it on their websites and so forth. So that's how we know about it. But what I've come to uh, accept is, so it's no, and, and even though we know about all this and we're seeing it, there's still a very lame uh, response, a limp response, that is to say not much of anything. So it's, I think we've gone from the phase of thinking that the issue is about ignorance to we need to accept the issue is really about absolute apathy. And that's a lot more problematic because now the issue isn't so much Islam or what Muslims are doing. Muslims are doing what Muslims have always done. There's really no surprise to me or to anyone else familiar with the Islamic teachings and Islamic history and so forth. But what's happening now is you have powerful agencies, the powers that be in the West, who for whatever reason one wants to speculate are whitewashing, ignoring, distorting everything just to protect the image of Islam, even if it means sacrificing millions of Christians, according to one authoritative poll, up to 100,000 Christians are persecuted every year. How many people know that? Raymond, with this Islamic Jihad being waged against the West, with Islam's hate of the cross being waged against Christians and being waged overall in terms of the whole uh, uh, holy war against the West, where are we headed? And in terms of our denial, where are we headed? Where we're headed, and I would say this, is the Islamic problem is a problem, but it's not the primary problem. The secondary, the primary problem is here among us, and it's called the mainstream media, it's called the politicians, it's called the neighbor down the street who's been brainwashed and indoctrinated by them, and it's called this epistemology and narrative created by this infrastructure that will not accept reality and that keeps lying to people so that they're either apathetic or indifferent or just completely clueless still. And so that's what we need to start understanding that Islam, it's a problem, but it's a secondary problem. The really primary problem is here among us. Raymond, thank you very much for joining the Glazov Gang. Thank you for all the work that you're doing. Thank you for shining a light on the victims. Thank you for shining a light on the dark forces uh, that are waging a war on Christians and, and on the West. We wish you the best in everything that you do. And it was an honor to have you with us. And thank you for all the work you do, Jamie. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond. And to our audience, a reminder, this is a fan-generated show now. Please, if you like these kind of programs and like these kind of discussions, go to jamieglazoff.com and support us. And we hope we'll see you next week on The Glazoff Game. Good night.